Okay, good day everyone. I'm Ms. Marita Dinahara, your PM subject teacher. So, we are now in a week two. It's the title of Clean and Sanitize Kitchen Premises. Okay? Uh, let's have a brief introduction. Okay, cleaning and sanitizing procedures must be part of the standard operating procedures that make up your food safety program. So, example, Jan, the cleaning and sanitizing is very important and we should have the standard operating procedures. Pag sinabi natin standard operating procedures, ito yung golden rules o instruction na pinapalo ng bawat restaurant, fast food, or even the hotel. Okay, improperly clean and sanitized surface allow harmful microorganisms to be transferred from one food to another. So, kapag uh, improperly, ibig sabihin, hindi mo na ayos o nilinisan o na-sanitize yung mga kitchen premises, kitchen tools, kitchen equipment. Kapag ka ganun daw, madami daw ang harmful microorganism or even the virus or bacteria can transfer sa mga microorganism uh, or even the virus or bacteria can transfer sa mga pagkain na lulutuin natin or hinahanda natin. Okay? Ayan. So, in the picture, what can you say about the picture? Okay. So, the pictures are the kitchen tools that we can see in our kitchen or in our house, okay? So, the following are lists of cooking materials, kitchen utensils, and equipment that are commonly found in the kitchen. Okay. So, we have the cooking materials. Okay. Number one is the aluminum. Okay, it, it is most used in the kitchen and most popular because it is lightweight, attractive, and least expensive. So, uh, ito yung mga common na meron tayo sa bahay. Ang bawal nga sa picture. So, ito yung mga magagaan lang at ito rin ang pinakamurang materials na makikita natin. So, ito yung picture natin. Halimbawa natin. Okay. Next, number two is the stainless steel. Okay, it is the it is the most popular material used for tools and equipment, but it is more expensive. So, okay, so ito yung um uh, mabibigat o makikinta ba yan? Hanibawa yung sa picture na ikita niya siya, uh, mabibigat siya na only ng uh, uh, kitchen materials makintab siya, and maganda yung pagkakagawa, and durable siya. Pero, mahal. So, pag sinabi natin durable, matibay. Okay. Okay, next, number three, glass. It is used for salad making and dessert, but not practical for top or surface working. We have two types of glass. Okay, two types of glass, heat resistant and non-heat resistant. So, pag sinabi natin heat resistant, uh, ito yung pwede natin ilagay sa oven, uh, sa microwave, pwede natin paglutuan uh, ng baked macaroni or cassava. At kapag sinabi, na, uh, kapag sinabi naman natin non-heat resistant, ito, uh, ito yung mga baso na iniinuman natin, mga platong pinagkakainan, na hindi natin pwedeng ilagay sa uh, sa mga oven or microwave oven. So, ito yung example ng a glass. Okay? Next. Okay. <laughs> Number four, the cast iron. So, it is durable but must be heat oil to avoid rusting. So, Ayan, yun na sa picture. So, ito naman yung mga heavy na makikita ninyo sa mga bahay ninyo. Uh, ito yung mga uh, pinagsasaingan natin. 
Uh, tapos halimbawa kapag accidental mo, nalaglag yung sakit, at natamaan yung paa natin, ang sakit kasi nga, sobrang bigat niya. And, uh, ang usually na, and usually, nagkakaroon ng white moisture na white particles inside kasi nga, kailangan natin siyang uh, nilalagyan o pinapahira ng pore uh, para hindi siya mag-moist or mag-post uh, mag ng kalawa. Okay, yan. Number, number five, Tiflon. It is a special coating applied inside aluminum or steel pads in pads. It prevents from sticking to the pad. So, uh, this is called non-stick pan. Yan, nasa picture. Uh, kapag nagpiprito tayo, hindi na natin kailangan ng mga mantika kasi non-stick pan na siya and nagpo-produce na ng sariling mantika yung mga food na piniprito natin uh, dyan sa piklot. Okay? Okay, so, uh, let's move on to our kitchen tool. So, I will not discuss it uh, one by one kasi uh, you already discussed it or you already learned this kitchen tools and this is since nung grade 7 and grade 8. So, napag-aralan nyo na yan. So, okay, so, here are the list of the kitchen tools. Can opener, colanders, plastic and hard rubber, cutting boards, uh, panels, garlic braid, a uh, garlic braid, grater, uh, kitchen, kitchen shears, potato ma uh, and potato masher, rotary beater, right beater, paper, uh, serving spoon, serving tongs, spatula. Foods and temperature scale. Next is this wooden spoon. And then next time some measuring tools, measuring top for liquid ingredients, household scale, scoops or dippers, and then the measuring spoon. Okay, next uh knives and types of knives. Okay, number one is the uh Okay, kinds of knives, French, uh, French knife, or commonly called a uh, shift knife, and then fruit and salad knife, and then the kitchen knife. And then next, uh, citrus knife and paring knife, and the last is the vegetable peeler, okay? Okay, so next we have the equipment. Equipment may refer to a small electrical appliance such as a mixer or a large expensive power operated appliance such as a range or a refrigerator. So equipment, ito yung nakakatulong sa atin para mapadali ang ating mga pagluluto at dito rin tayo na rin store ng mga pagkain like for example, yan, the refrigerator. So, uh, dyan natin a uh, Ini-imbak yung ating mga pagkain or yung ating mga uh, frozen foods. And then, the second one is the oven. This where we bake our pastries. And then, the microwave ovens. We use that to preheat or heat our food. And then, the last is the blender. Uh, it is used to chop puree and liquefy other ingredients. So, we will no longer uh, discuss it one by one because you already know the uses of each equipment. So, let's move on to the... Okay, so let's move on to the surface to be clean. So, okay, the following, the following are the common kitchen premises that always need to be clean to avoid food contamination and for our own protection. So, as when we say kitchen premises, ito yung parte ng bawat kusina natin. Like yung lababo, yung tabi ng lababo, yung floor, yung walls. Lahat yan, tinatawag natin kitchen premises. So, 
Okay, these are the list of Una walls. Uh, one of these sides of a room or building connecting floor and ceiling or foundation of roof that encloses space. So, ito yung mga pader natin. Okay, bakit kailangan natin itong linisin? Dahil may mga dumidikit siyang microorganism. Uh, yun yung mga dinadaanan ng mga itis. So, diba yung um, mga pwedeng daanan din ng daga, no? Continue tayo sa floor. The little base of a room where working flow happens. So, even yung floor, kailangan din natin yung linisin. Okay, shelves have been flat, usually long, narrow piece of material such as wood, fastened horizontally as on wall at a distance from the floor to hold objects. So, and then, okay, the bench is, okay, a long, a long seat for two or more persons. And then the work surface designed for use at the surface or something. So this is where we work. Sa kitchen, ito yung uh, nilalakaran natin, iniikutan natin. So we make sure na dapat malinis din yan. And then next. Okay, cooking, uh, cooking equipment and appliances. Machine that help us to reproduce product at ease. It has a greater time of close contact with our product that causes them to absorb residues from different materials or ingredients. That is why it is considered as one of the surfaces to be heat. So, uh, as we discussed earlier, ano-ano ba yung mga appliances natin other than oven, really, uh, micro or, uh, microwave, blender, o ano pa ba yung pwede natin linisin? Like mga yung electric mixer, all the small appliances, oven, toaster, ayan. So, next, the store room, a, a space for storing of goods, or supply. So, also when we say storerooms, lahat ng uh, naka-imbak, like for example, uh, sa mga fast food, uh, meron silang mga lagay na kung saan doon nakastock sa storerooms na yun, yung mga bread, mga kailangan sa kitchen, yung mga bigas, yung spaghetti noodles, na kailangan sa pagluluto, doon lahat naka-imbak sa storerooms doon. So, they always make sure na malinis yun. Uh, sinasanitize nila yun. Nililinis nila yun. Kasi pwedeng makapasok yung daga o yung mga itis. Pwedeng kainin o sirain yung mga ingredients na nandun doon sa loob. Pagkatapos, uh, kung mayroon tayong storerooms for our ingredients. Okay, the last is the cupboard. A closet with shelves where dishes, utensils, or food is it. So, kung meron tayong storeroom, meron din tayong cupboards. Ano ba yung cupboards? Ay, yung cupboards na yan, this is where we put our utensils, dishes, or yung uh, mga pots and pans, kal uh, kalbi, kaldero, kawali. So, dyan natin nilalagay. So, we make sure na malinis yun and dry and clean and sanitize. So, these are the kitchen premises na kailangan natin Linisin. So, ano pa ba yung pwede nating linisin? So, of course, you're eating, you're eating using utensils, the common na ginagamit natin sa loob ng bahay. So, we have Okay, other things need to be clean. So, yan, eating utensils, plate, phone, glasses, cup, and saucer. Yes. So, of course, yung, uh, of course, you're eating utensils in natin. Uh, eating utensils natin. Na common na ginagamit natin sa loob ng bahay. We have the plates, spoons, fork, glasses, cup, and saucers. In the next, um, so, yung mga cooking utensils na yan, so, mga uh, paldero, kawali, kaserola, kettle, and kailangan din natin Linisin yung mga iyan. Then next, the cooking utensils, pot, pans, 
Ipel and Casserole. Ayan, ayan na yung nasabi ko na kanina, no? Kailangan nga natin limitin yung mga yan. So, next, uh, uh, cut it tools, cut, uh, cutlery and knife. So, yung cutting tools, uh, yung knife na yan, yung cutlery, ayan, kailangan din natin limitin. Ayan. Yeah. And then, the preparing, preparing tools, so, yung chopping board, containers, of course, so, kailangan din natin limitin yan. Yung garbage, uh, garbage bin, yung lagay ng basura, kailangan din natin lilinis, and also, of course, yung sink and jeans, yung ating lababo, hindi dapat na, uh, hindi lang dapat na pagkatapos maghugas, hinahayaan na lang natin na yung mga kanina, uh, mga kanin-kanin na tira-tira, na paghugas, so dapat nililinis natin yun. Hindi lang dapat natin iniuwanan yun sa labab. Ayan. And then, uh, the next topic is, okay, the next, uh, the next topic is the cleaning for face without damaging property and adver adversely affecting health. So, so this is how we clean na uh, hindi daw dap, uh, hindi daw masikira or maapektuhan ng ating mga kitchen premises or even our health. So, dapat na protected din daw tayo. So, and how to keep your kitchen clean and safe. So, Although they are not visible treats, many microorganisms waiting in your kitchen can infect your cooking and eating, and consequently have a negative effect on your health. So, uh, hindi nga daw natin nakikita, like katulad, uh, katulad ng mga nakaraang taon, no, yung uh, coronavirus, no, hindi natin nakikita. COVID-19, yung mga microorganism, hindi natin nakikita. So, we, uh, we make sure na dapat malinis pagdating, uh, pagdating natin sa bahay, naguhugas tayo ng kamay, dinidesentric uh, natin yung ating mga chinelas, mga sapatos bago pumasok sa loob ng bahay. No, nung kasagsagan ng ating uh, COVID-19. So, yun yung ginagawa natin, no? Uh, Bago tayo uh, pagkapasok natin ng bahay, nag-disinfect tayo ng ating gamit. So next, food poisoning and uh, diarrhea are just some conditions which might be called, uh, caused by repairing food in a dirty germ and infested kitchen. So kung hindi maayos at madumi ang ating area na pinaglulutuan natin, so pwede tayo mag-food mag -food poison. So, Sabihin na natin, hey, ma'am, niluto naman po yung pagkain. Yes po, uh, niluto natin. Pero how about nung uh, pinapackaging mo na yung pagkain? Oh, malay mo may mga microorganism doon na pinag, uh, doon sa pinagpatungan mo so it can transfer doon sa food. So pwede ma, uh, ma-food poison kung uh, pwede kang ma-food poison, magka-diarrhea or sometimes cause uh, death pa nga. So, pag sobrang uh, lala ng microorganism bacteria na napunta sa pagkain at nakain ng tao. Okay, so, kanina, no? So, to prevent all of this, uh, or para hindi na ulit mangyari, so, you need to make sure na that your kitchen is heat and safe from bacteria, bacteria and other germs. So, with uh, make sure natin na we clean and sanitize. So, here are the ways to ensure the cleanliness of your kitchen and keep bacteria at bay. So, this, uh, uh, these are the following that we need uh, that we need to practice no, kailangan natin gawin at sanayin na ginagawa sa loob ng ating kitchen or ng, uh, sa loob ng bahay natin. So, number one, Ayan, remove unnecessary clutter from surface. Okay, so, malimbawa yung kitchen natin, ay yung kitchen ninyo na hindi naman ganun kalakihan and yung kalat doon, yung mga ba uh, basura, mga pinagkainan and also, halimbawa, no, yung knife nagkalat doon and halimbawa, uh, uh, mayroon kang mali, o oh, mayroon kayong kasama sa bahay na bata. So, 
pwede siyang madesiderasyon siya or ikaw mismo or kaila. Kaya ang kailangan natin na tignan yung ating mga paligid na pinaglalagyan ng ating uh, mga plato or mga baso. Kung maayos ba, so unnecessary clutter from surfaces. So, remove dapat lahat yung mga unnecessary na yun. So, tanggali. And then number two, keep your refrigerator clean and tidy. So, no? so kailangan yung ating refrigerator ay laging malinis kasi nga, doon tayo nag-i-impact or nag store ng ating mga frozen foods or mga leftovers natin. And then number three, use a rubbish bin with a lid to keep odors out that attack flies and other insects. So, halimbawa, kapag yung basurahan natin, no, walang takip, so, asahan nyo na madali, uh, madaming uh, mga langaw ang pupunta doon, pupunta dyan, na, and also na maaamoy din yan ng mga daga. So, papasok yung daga dyan, sa loob ng basurahan, and then magkakalkal ng inyong mga basura. So, we make sure na meron siyang over or takip. Okay? And then, um, wash your, uh, wash and disinfect your rubbish bin once a week. So, so every week daw, kailangan pagtanggal ng basura. So, dapat nililinis, sinasabunan, hinuhugasan, mabuti ang ating mga basura. Hindi yung pagkatanggal natin ng basura, lalagyan na lang ulit ng plastic, then okay na. So, dapat hindi ganun, no? Kailangan pagkatanggal ng basura, hugasak, maigi, and then, ah, uh, lagyan ng sabon, um, uh, dapat sin uh, sinasabunan, hinuhugas na mabuti yung ating mga basura. And then, uh, pang lima, so number five, uh, use separate chopping boards for different kinds of foods. So, uh, so di ba tayo sa bahay, usually, isa lang, uh, isa lang naman talaga, or minsan dalawa yung ginagamit natin uh, ginagamit natin. So, yun at yun lang ang ginagamit natin sa lahat ng pinaghihiwaan natin. So, ang gagawin na lang natin kapag gano'n, no? Ah, kung wala tayong madaming sangkalan o chopping board, dapat, ah, hugasan lagi. So, palagi ang hugasan. Kapag, halimbawa, no? Ah, naghiwa ka ng meat, tapos maghihiwa ka ng afternoon, after mo maghiwa ng meat, so maghihiwa ka na ng vegetables or fruits. So, dapat bago pa maghiwa ng vegetables or fruits, so dapat uh, hinugasan mo ng mabuti bago gamitin maghiwa ng vegetables or fruits doon sa shopping board na yun na ginamit mong, pang, uh, na ginamit mong pang maghiwa ng meat. So, before mo gamitin yun, sa uh, other... Uh, Bago mo ulit siya gamitin, so kailangan mo siyang inisin ng mabuti. And then, uh, number six, uh, change change the digital frequency which you use in wiping surfaces every day. So, uh, <clears throat> yung mga basahan natin na pinupunas o pinampupunas natin ng lamin sa ng kitchen, kitchen top, kailangan uh, lagi siyang pinapalitan o nilalabhan or kailangan natin i-make sure na malinis lagi yung mga uh, cloth kasi pwede pagbahaya ng microorganism. So, and then, next. Okay, uh, number seven. Use paper towel for any that is likely to cause contamination such as roast meat or eggs and anything that fallen into the floor. So, So, we can use paper towel. Ito yung malaking uh, papel or paper tissue na makapalso kung wala na. Kung wala na, kung wala nun, make sure na yung basahan ninyo ay maayos at malinis. And then, number eight, keep kitchen floors free from debris and grease by sleeping and washing regularly. So, lalo na, no, kapag halimbawa, nagpiprito na tayo, nagpiprito tayo na isa, ng karne, di ba? Uh, kung mapapansin nyo, na tumatalsik yung mga mantika nasa floor, nasa tile. So, uh, manudulas tayo. So, make sure na kapag after natin magluto, 
imamat natin o pupunasan ng basahan para walang uh, madudula. And then number nine, do not leave dirty crockery and pans to fester where they can attack harmful bacteria, insect, and rodent. So, lalo na tayo nung uh, naranasan ko na rin yan. So, inuutosan, uh, kapag tayo inuutosan nun ni nanay na magtuga, so, kasi tapos na siya magroto, so, di ba, pag inutosan ka, sabihin mo mo sa, um, yung sabihin pa natin, no, mamaya na lang, nai. So, natatambak na yun yung mga kaldero, kawali doon sa lababo, and habang nagtatagal yan, nabibigay na kamuyan sa mga daga or ibis, So, dapat pagkatapos ganunin o pagkatapos magluto, dapat ililinis din kaagad. So, para hindi siya lapitan ng mga, ayan, ng mga harm for bacteria, insects, and students. Okay, next, uh, wash surfaces that get touched. So, okay, no? Lalo na, no, kapag uh, yung mga doorknob ng ating CR, after natin gumamit ng CR, nung hahawak tayo sa doorknob to, kasi nalabas na tayo, tapos pupunta tayo sa kitchen, for example, nung kakain tayo, so make sure daw na maguhugas tayo ng kamay, so, ayan, yung number 11, wash your hands before handling foods, and after, after if you sneeze or cough, blow your nose, go to the bathroom, or touch high use surfaces, so, So, make sure na yung ating kamay malinis, lalo na ngayon na we are still here in pandemic situation. Always, always di ba, sabi nga, magbubas ng kamay, mag -alcohol. And then, next is, ayan, cleaning agent used in sanitizing kitchen premises. So, we have the, uh, we have the types of sanitizers and disinfectants. Okay, types and sa types of sanitizers and disinfectant. So, there are various types of chemicals used for sanitizing and disinfecting equipment and first aid procedures for accidents caused by chemicals. Okay, chemicals. And, una dyan, chlorine, carbolic acid, ammonia, surgeon, dishwashing liquid, benzene, and soap, and also alcohol, and boric acid. Okay, so uh, kapag tayo ay maglilinis at magsasanitize tayo, we can use the chemical, and, yan, yung chlorine, carbolic acid, ammonia, detergent, dishwashing liquid, benzene, soap, alcohol, and the boric acid. So pwede natin siyang gamitin kapag tayo ay maglilinis or magsasanitize. The next, the chemical. So, now we will going to discuss the number two, which is the okay, hot water, cream, dry heat, UV light, or ultraviolet light, filt and filtration. So, after we clean, so after we clean, after natin Sabunan, after natin magdanglaw, magkakaroon tayo ng heat sanitizing o yung heat sanitation. So, paano ito ginagawa? Yan, so yung sa picture, hot water. So, using the hot water, magpapakulo tayo ng tubig. Kung wala tayong uh, faucets na no, yung nasa picture, na nagpuproduce ng mainit na tubig. Um, oh, so, ma'am, saan mag, uh, saan ang gagaling yung ang mainit na tubig. Nagsaan ang gagaling yung tubig na mainit sa faucet? So, mayroong machine na in-install, lalo na sa mga restaurant or hotel, na pwedeng hot or cold. So, yung water na lumalabas sa faucet na iyan. So, kung wala niyan sa bahay, pwede tayong magpakulo ng tubig. Yan yung gagamitin natin pang damli or pang bandaw doon sa mga isang sanitize na mga kitchen tools and equipment. So, next, number two, ayan, team. So, yung mga nak nakikita niya sa picture, no? So, para siyang vacuum na nagpuproduce o naglalabas ng mainit na hangin o katulad ng napapansin niyo sa ating pictures. So, ito yung nagpuproduce para ma-disinfect, lalo na, no? 
uh, di ba, noon, uh, halimbawa, lalo na noon, no, uh, yung umpisa pa lang ng ating lockdown, di ba, ang daming nag-spray o nag disinfect sa mga pathwalk, yan, gawin na sa picture, uh, sa mga kalsada, so it means na dinidisinfect nila o nagsasanitize sila para mawala yung mga virus or yung microorganism. And the next one is dry gate. So, ito naman yung equipment na pwede natin ilagay yung mga plato, baso natin. Then, siya na yung uh, magpo-produce ng heat para mag-sanitize yung ating mga kitchen wares. So, dito, uh, dito naman sa kanan, yung mga kitchen wares. So, dito naman sa kanan, uh, dito sa kanan yung ginagamit ng mga uh, fast food chain. And, no, kung makipansin ninyo, kung saan, ah, uh, nakalagay yung mga kutsara at tinidor and no sobrang init niyan kung sobrang init niyan kasi nga uh, usually uh, pag uh, kumakain uh, tayo ng fast food no pag nahawakan niyo yung yan yung mga spoon fork no yung kutsara at tinidor so mainit because this sanitizes using the dry heat yun ang kita niyo sa picture the next is the UV light or yung ultraviolet light. So, uh, yun na makikita nyo sa picture. So, this, uh, this one of the most popular, lalo na nung kasagsagan ng pandemic. So, until today pa rin naman. So, kasi gumagamit tayo ng ultraviolet light. So, yun na sa picture, no, ini-install yan. Pwede yan i-install sa kitchen. As, as you can see sa picture, nakalagay siya sa may countertop ng lababo para ma-disinfect yung kitchen at meron din ultraviolet bag, no? Ayan. Ayan, ultraviolet bag. Ito naman yung uh, nauso, yung mga puro pa-deliver ng food, yung like shopping, kasada, no? So, bago nila hawakan yung item o yung food, nilalagay na nila dun sa loob ng ultraviolet bag na yan para ma-disinfect. So, alam ko nauso yata yan sa mga artista, yung mga mga rider dyan, no? Uh, dyan muna nila nilalagay sa loob ng uh, uh, ultraviolet bag na yan. Para uh, pag hinawakan nila, uh, na-disinfect na yung uh, yung item or yung food. So, kasi malay nga naman nila kung saan galing yung rider. Malay natin kung may COVID si rider, no? O wala. Yan ang purpose na Oh, yung purpose ni ultraviolet ba? Okay? So, the next picture, ah, uh, kami, nasubukan ko nang gumamit ito, yung sa, yung next na picture, no, yung UV light stand. So, we also use that, ah, uh, UV light stand. So, ito yung, ah, uh, madami or nauuso din kasi, ah, uh, binibenta rin siya. So, pwede natin itong ilagay sa loob ng bahay. Ah, uh, ang gagawin lang natin, Uh, papatay lang natin yung ilaw and then dapat close lahat yung ah uh, halimbawa kung yung kwarto lang yung i-sterilize mo using that uh, UV light stand kailangan sarado yung pinto kasi yung amoy niya masakit sa ilong o masakit sa ulo so bawal mo rin bawal mo ma so hindi mo siya pwedeng tingnan habang naka-on yung UV light na yun kasi nakakasira rin siya ng ating uh, katawan so yan, uh, ginagamit yan to disinfect yung, o para masanitize yung ating buong bahay using that UV light stand, okay? The filtration. So, so the word filtration from, from, uh, came from the word filter. So, lalo na yung mga tubig natin, no? Yung mga, yung mga panahon na nawawalan tayo ng tubig, uh, kasi inaayos, so, So, minsan yung pumapasok na tubig natin nung madumi. So, kailangan natin gamitan ng filtration kasi hindi natin alam kung ligtas ba yon at kung ligtas inumin. So, yung mga water natin, halimbawa yung mga water sa Maynila, no? Or tangke, kung saan yung man, ah, nakukuha yung tubig. Or kung meron kang mga filtration machine na kayo na ini-install, yung nasa picture, yan, yung... Yan, tapos, uh, pinifilter niya lahat ng lalabas na tubig uh, galing sa faucet and 
So, pag lumabas na yung tubig, <clears throat> ah, lahat ng lalabas lang sa faucet na yun ay malinis na. Kasi dumaan na siya sa filtration machine. So, ibig sabihin, malinis na or na-sanitize na yung water natin. So, that is what we call san uh, sanitation or filtration. Okay? So, the next is the Total Facility Learning and Maintenance Program of Food Service Department must be planned to reflect in concern for sanitation, a way of life. As many of these sanitation results can be obtained through. So, ano nga ba itong mga ito? And paano daw maa-achieve yung mga paglilinis? So, sa so, bawat department daw or bawat company, so, nagkakandak sila ng mga special program para matuto yung kanina mga employee or empleyado how to do the standard operating procedures at yung maging uh, or masanitize yung bawat uh, facility. Limbawa, number one. So, establishing high standards. So, Yun yung number one nila dyan, yung SOP, that is the golden rule na yung kanilang pagliligo. The number two, we can schedule. Scheduling of assignments that are clearly understood by workers. So, ito dapat uh, bago mag-utol sa mga empleyado, no, dapat i-train muna or ongoing dapat yung training that, ayan sa number three natin, ongoing training. So, dito tinuturo kung paano gamitin yung mga equipment, paano maglinis, ano-ano yung mga opening procedures or closing procedures sa paglilinis ng buong store or fast food. Then, na number four, proper using of cleaning supplies. So, ano-ano nga ba yung mga chemical agent na gagamitin mo? So, dapat alam mo kung saan uh, saan pwedeng gamitin at hindi dapat gamitin mo. And then, number five, provision of proper materials and equipment to accomplish that. So, kailangan meron kang proper materials and equipment na i-accomplish dapat or parang list na uh, dapat uh, dapat nila halimbawa ng number one. So, halimbawa maglilinis ka ng CR, so dapat meron kang hawak na checklist. So, dapat yung, ah, dapat ganun din sa kitchen. Kapag maglilinis ka sa mga employee natin or yung mga natatabaw na sa restaurant na hotel na iyon, so, da, binibigyan sila ng mga pat or ng checklist na dapat nilang gawin. And then next, okay, so number five, frequent meaningful inspection and performance reviews. So, sa mga, ah, halimbawa, sa mga Fast food industry like restaurant, bakery, fast food, hotel, yung mga owner or managers, sila yung nag-check kung madinis nga ba yung mga kitchen premises, stores, store area, yung walls, and even yung comfort room. So, next. And safety and first aid procedures. So, uh, dito, so just in case lang na, for example, nasa loob kayo ng kitchen or nagtatrabaho kayo sa isang restaurant, for example, no, dapat alam ninyo yung mga safety procedures na dapat gawin just in case na magkaroon ng accident or ano-ano nga ba yung mga yun. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga to. So, and number one, if the person has been exposed to poisonous fumes such as carbon monoxide, get him or her in into a fresh air immediately. So, alimbawa no, nakalanghap siya ng mga chemical at nahirapan siyang huminga, so dapat dalhin niyo kaagad siya sa open area para makalanghap siya ng sariwang hangin. And then number two, if the person swallowed the poison, remove anything remaining in the mouth. So, kung halimbawa uh, nakalinok man siya or nakakain siya, 
So, you need to remove anything remaining sa, la- uh, sa bibig niya. So, kailangan tanggalin lahat kung ano yung kung ano man yung mga uh, nakatira pang residue or particles pang anyang nainom or nakain. And then, number three, Okay, in the number three, no, if the suspected poison is a household cleaner or other chemical, read the uh, label and follow instructions for accident poisoning. So, halimbawa kung hindi niya inaasahan na nakainom siya or hindi niya unexpected na akala niya part ng ingredients yung nahalo kasi doon siya sa storerooms. Kasi doon siya sa storerooms, uh, uh, ang dapat gawin daw, yung dapat gawin daw, tingnan o tingnan yung label sa likod kung anong uh, class ng chemicals yung na, nainom or nainom niya or nakain niya. So, number four, if the product, if the product is toxic, the level will likely advise you to call the hospital or doctor. So, kapag hindi mo na rin ah, talaga alam yung gagawin mo, dalhin mo, na, dalhin mo na sila sa hospital, yung pinakamalapit na hospital. Okay, and then number five, follow the treatment direction given by the poison centers. And then number six, if the poison is spilled on the uh, person clothing, remove the clothing and pour the body with continuous tap water. So, especially, for example, yung muriatic acid, painit yun sa katawan. And just in case na, nap- na natapunan ka or yung, yun yung uh, naging uh, cause ng accident, tanggalin at, or palitan yung damit kasi mainit sa skin yun. And uh, mag ng water o buhusan ng uh, maninis na tubig para kahit pa paano, maging comfortable yung tao na na aksidente. In the next, storage and security of chemicals. So, paano nga ba dapat natin i-store o i-secure yung ating mga chemicals? So, the following are recommendations for the storage and security of chemicals and cleaning agents. So, number one, keep them in a separate area away from food and other products. So, yung mga pagkain at panglinis dapat hindi magkasama yan sa isang lalagyan. So, dapat magkahiwalay. Ilagay daw uh, sa, ano ba, uh, ayan sa number 2, keep on lower shelves to prevent accidents and to keep chemicals from falling into food. So, ilagay sa ilalim or sa mga ilalim ng cabinet or sa separate cabinet na lang. So, yung mga chemicals na. And then, number 3, store in a cold and well ventilated room. So, wag daw natin siya ilalagay sa sobrang kulo. And then, number four, do not store near heat. So, pag uh, nainitan kasi, or halimbawa, nilagay mo siya sa polluted area, yung tendency pwede sumabog yung chemical. So, maging maingat tayo sa pag-store ng ating chemicals. And the next, do not keep punctured aerosol cans. So, halimbawa yung mga uh, nagmamalfunction na mga cans or mga sira-sira na na aerosol, so dapat hindi na natin siya in-store. So, kasi it will cause an accident. So, dapat pinatapon na natin yan. And then, number six, store chemicals with the lids tight, uh, tightly on. So, dapat laging may, uh, may takip yung mga chemicals at nakasara ng mabuti. And then, number seven, make sure chemicals and other cleaning agents are clearly labeled, specifying their content and use. So, uh, dapat, uh, uh, yung mga... Dapat yung mga yan, dapat nakalabel yung mga chemicals. Kasi nga, uh, mamaya hindi natin alam ano nga ba dito yung muriatic acid, ano nga ba dito yung abrasive. 
So, dapat maging uh, careful tayo at dapat nakalabel lahat. And then, ensure that the use by date and manufacture date is clearly readable. So, kung yung mga pagkain may expira uh, expiration, ganun din sa mga chemical. May expiration date din, uh, din siya. And then, number nine, Yan. Storage container should be free of corrosion and moisture. So, dapat walang mga singaw o walang mga butas-butas yung ating mga chemicals o yung mga containers. And then, number 10, uh, number 10 the storage area should be kept secure and located when not in use. So, dito, uh, lalo na yung mga Halimbawa, may mga kapatid tayo maliliit or may mga baby tayo sa loob ng bahay, dapat nakalak lagi yung mga cabinet or nakalagay, uh, nakalagay sa hindi nila maaabot yung ating mga chemical. The next, only store chemicals in designated container. So, meron, nga, uh, meron mga chemicals na hindi pwede sa plastic bottle, so dapat nakalagay siya sa proper Container. And then the last, do not mix chemicals. So, huwag na huwag po natin itatry na mag-mix ng chemicals. Kasi pwede siyang mag-explode o sumabo. Ayan, so, I hope uh, you learned our lesson for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. So, I hope na makapag-take down notes kayo ulit sa ating mga, sa inyong TLA notebook. And again, I will check also your notebook on, on Tuesday. So, thank you for listening.